<laughs> oh, oh my god. Uh, hey everyone, your host Eric Brown of Neo Reality Entertainment and are you the Wrestleverse? Got a new setup for the overlays and all that. Made this uh, at the drop of a hat today after. Oh my god. Hell of a show. Bravo. Good job, Tony. We're proud of you. But we're not talking about the main event. Not yet. The main event surprisingly was the Anarchy in the Arena match. I would have had the four pillars go at it just to showcase how great they are by showing that they can overthrow the elite as match of the night, but that's just me. Uh, so for so long we've been waiting for this match. Uh, and, and I said this a lot of times to see these four, the four pillars of AEW. Maxwell Jacob Friedman, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, Le Sex God, the Spanish God, the Daredevil, the Privileged One, and the Jungle Boy. All competing. They've had their matches against each other back to back to back to back. They fought each other. Um, I want to say that was secretly planned because when you think about it, it's been... Four years, four matches, four, four years, four matches, all leading to a four pillars match off between the, with the four pillars. I think they made known that by accident, really. I, I think that was just a massive accident just made happen. By the way, it, it's beneficial to them. Um, Yeah, this has been the match I have been wanting to see for some time now when MGF won the gold. Like, we've seen his matches with all of them in the past. We saw Darby and Sammy, Jack, Jack Perry and uh, the others, the four pillars all having their singles and tag matches together. And we had a tag match where Darby and Jungle Boy got added. And it was all going to lead to this. Four pillar four way. For the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And by God, look at this belt. Okay. And this has been the match uh, that I've been hyped up for since the beginning. Since the beginning, this whole Four Pillar stuff started. I have been wanting to see these four go at it. I know they have, like, out of everyone in this match, MJF, Darby were the most convincing of who could walk out as the champion. Jungle Boy, he's getting there, but he's not ready to be the world champ. Not yet, at least, in my opinion. Sammy Guevara, this is his first official time ever competing for the world title. Shock. I, I was actually shocked when I realized that. <laughs> yeah, saying a lot. Um, but to see these four... Here's the thing, they're all in their mid to late 20s. I have said this for some time, imagine where these guys are gonna be 10 years from now. Being in AEW, being in WWE, being in New Japan, doesn't matter. 10 years from now, we get this match again when they're very seasoned and peppered, peppered and seasoned and experienced with them. Like MJF's already great enough, but imagine how he'll be when he gets to his prime years more so Darby Allen don't kill yourself not doing the Everest climb next year like he's already planning to write he's already drafting his will in the event uh, something happens to him at Mount Everest and Sammy Guevara is Sammy Guevara because he's the guy that would go ahead and say okay here's an idea Tony I want to be thrown off a helicopter 200 feet in the air no Two years later, he two years later, he asks for it again, and Tony's like, "We can't afford that kind of insurance, you idiots." And if you ask Sam Guevara and Darby Allen, then that's just a recipe for anarchy, more so. Adam, and they were 
and last year, double or nothing, at last year's double or nothing, I'm just gonna say it, out of, besides Jack Perry, everyone else was in a downward spiral. MGF wa was trying to walk out or bullshit like that. Uh, got beat, got squashed by Wardlow, so we don't know how that ended. Uh, he's now the world champion. Darby I lost to Kyle Riley. Sammy Guevara was in a hopelessly annoying storyline. And Jungle Boy Jack Perry was feeding, was pretty much the only one consistently doing good stuff. So, yeah, out of all four of them, Jungle Boy is the most innocent. But uh, I liked how MGF acknowledged the other three as his equals, so to speak, in the terms of the four pillars. Uh, even though Punk has dismissed MJF as one of the pillars, he has acknowledged Britt Baker as the supreme pillar. Though, I feel like we need to get second to three more layers of pillars for who are future talents for AEW's future. These are the first four, the day ones. Well, MJF could say he's day zero because he was at all in the original. So, yeah, I, I was finally ready to see this match. When I finally got a chance to watch the Rebar Mitzvah, seeing these four stake their claim at the top, it has been a desire I wanted to see, and I am so glad we were getting it for Double or Nothing. It was a little, the buildup was not as the greatest build in the world. Yeah, they were better, but I looked at it as more or less of a match of storytelling, and more of a match for get ready for this. Like they had some good moments and some good solid some solid matches, but um, yeah, the four pillar tag match was especially great. But to see these four, who are so young and have so much looking forward to the future with these guys, it was everything we needed it to be. It needed to be more. More, less of a story driven pop the uh, character driven storytelling matchup and more about a these four are the future they are our four horsemen they are our answer to the four horsewomen they are our answer to all the four top pillars that other companies have built around the smackdown we had the smackdown six we had the raw elites that or the reign of terror so to speak we had the SmackDown 7, so to speak, for during the 2016 draft. Uh, we have, and now we have AEW's The Four Pillars and NXT's The Four Horsewomen. I will say it again. Imagine where they're gonna be 10 years from now. Unless the world explodes, but that's a different subject altogether. I'm not a political channel. No matter how many times I've been tempted. But yeah. This is an investment match. This is to showcase everyone first and foremost. This is the investment we're making. These are the four talents. We got four years in them. Let's get them to see where they go. Then we'll try again. Hope and while well, they'll probably do more matches against each other down the road. Give us six more years. We'll see you all. We'll see you all in uh, 2029 or 2030. Oh God. Like. Just look at these four. Now, Jungle Boy, out of all the four here, Jungle Boy is the least refined in people's eyes, mostly through promo sake. He's actually acknowledged this, so props to him. Props to him for acknowledging, yeah, I have my flaws and all that. Props to him. I, I'll give him credit. Like, he could just be, he could just say, hey, you know, you this much investment in me. Look at me. I'm swag and, and arrogant or be reactively negatively in the worst way possible as Sammy Guevara or be daredevil Darby Allen who's trying his damnedest to be the next Mick Foley before actually becoming Mick Foley I shudder to know what would have been like if Mick Foley fought him and I'm pretty sure they would have set the ring on fire just to just to say just to say that this was part of the plan and MGF is going to be MGF like, if he didn't have that big walk out of a big, big uh, convention event for the sign-off and uh, that whole contract crisis we were dealing with where he was ranting and raging over, I want to raise, I want to raise. Okay, okay, MGF, you do, you clearly deserve, like, this is the thing. This I've been meaning to say about this since last year. 
MJF was deserving of a raise. It was reported that MJF wanted a raise and Tony Khan agreed. We'll set up a meeting, drop a new contract. Uh, what's the worst that could happen? MJF didn't want their damn extension and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. And people came at me with that opinion on Twitter saying, oh, well, Vince did that for Stone Cold in the 90s. Okay, uh, the context is extremely different. One is a promotion that's trying to be an alternative. The other was dealing with another promotion that was hell bent on burning them to the ground. Of course, Vince was going to give in to what some worker demands because Vince needed all the allies he needed when WCW was destroying them. And, was, and when Bischoff was admitting, I will destroy you. I will bankrupt you, essentially. So yes, I was annoyed with, with how MJF did. So really, Jungle Boy Jack Perry is the most innocent of the three. And yet, some refer to him as Jungle Man. God damn it. For he has the girl. Yeah. And besides MJF being the champion, Darby Allin has had the most child challenges when you think about it. He's fought Chris Jericho. He fought Gian Moxley. Jungle Boy fought Kenny Omega. Uh, let's see, Sammy Guevara has never fought for the title up until this point. So yeah, props to all of them for building to this moment. And I love how, and, and I loved him even more when they referenced all the continuity history with these four, especially their past when it comes to the big gold belt, damn it. But, The match itself. Like, I know people complained about the buildup, but then the match happened and it was like, well, I should be like you we I proved, they proved us wrong. The match was gonna be freaking excellent. And honestly, as much as I did love the main event that closed out the show, I really would have preferred this to be the main event just to add that extra chip on their shoulder to say, top that, top the Anarchy in the Arena match. And I felt like they would have. I, I really think they're at that point where they could have stolen the show from the Elite and the Blackpool Combat Club and all the twists and turns they did and the wild music playing. And Jungle Boy, however, faces the character confliction. I mentioned how Jungle Boy is the, quote, purest of them all. They've acknowledged that. So, I've been saying that for like, what, the last year that Jungle Boy was pure, was the purest of the three. And I'm be, and I'm just gonna be that guy that says, $30,000, $40,000 please, Tony. I know you've been watching my Twitter channel, my Twitter, my Twitter account and YouTube channel, you son of a bitch. I demand my royalties. Or you can get uh, uh, Mikey Ruckus to make me music. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> I kid, I kid. But. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like the build up to an extent. I'll admit that. When these four went at it, I knew that they were going to steal it. I knew they were going to tear, tear the house down. And sure enough, they did. MJF was great. But to see these four, see where they're at now, to see how damn good they can go. And they're not even, any, any of them are not even in their 30s yet. And, and to see the ability they showcase, the selling, the match quality, the performance, the unpredictable nature like we all knew MGF was gonna win but they were so trying to their damnedest to prove that they could still they could probably dethrone MJF this night but the out of all of them I believe Darby Allen had the most chances Jungle Boy wasn't gonna do, go down the dark path he wanted to win the right way Darby Allen's willing to go down the dark path Sammy Guevara is Sammy Guevara and Sting getting involved in this, so props to that. I'll get, I'll give, him, I'll give Sting his props. He didn't get involved in this match, and we didn't get any outside interferences, no hot shot booking, 
with uh, Crash TV style interferences. We didn't get like Christian and Luchasaurus involved. They, they've established that's over and done with for with Jack Perry. We're moving on from that feud. Uh, Sammy Guerrero didn't get JAS to help, and uh, that was after this match was after the Jericho got black eye, and MGF didn't, and MGF did his cheats, but he didn't get any outside pull, pullback cash help. And oh, almost forgot! Congratulations to Sammy Guerrero and Ty and Tay Mello, uh, formerly known as Ty Conti. They're having a baby! Yay! Sadly, that means we will not be seeing Ty Conti for nine months and probably longer if she's going to do the parental leave. Which means my dreams of seeing her main event a show and win the world, win the women's title, be a TBS by Chris Statlander or the woman, or the world women's title by Tony Storm, has been dashed. Anyways, so Sammy's a lucky guy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I actually liked how they went, how creative they went with the ending. Like, like Jungle Boy being the honorable one would not use the belt like Sami Zayn did back in NXT when he was tempted to use it on Adrian Neville. My God, I'm old. I believe next year will be a total of 10 years since those days. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not having an existential crisis or anything. If I was, I'd be going crazy. But instead of like doing the trademark finish with the dynamite ring, or you know, doing another finish where which required, uh, which required uh, MJF to like do the video game ending where he just goes ahead and like throw after Darby gets the coffin drop in, he just goes ahead and throws him out of the ring and, and pins Jungle Boy. No, 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 no. He decides to get the belt that Jungle Boy threw down that wouldn't resort to it, put it on Jungle Boy's chest when Darby was in mid air, crash it to the belt. And MGF took advantage of that and did a side, side I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I'm going to get this move wrong, side sweep, pinfall, and, and got the victory. Following up on the uh, interaction between MGF and Darby Allen from 2020, 2021, I believe. I, I just need to get my dates correct because time is moving so fast these days. But yeah, and, and and I like that moment where they all go into submissions and all that, and they're locked in a submission four-way lock. Like everything happens in fours, damn it. And MGF, yeah, being the dirty son of a bitch scoundrel, tries to goad Sami Zayn into uh, not Sami Zayn, damn it, so many Sammies. Uh, Sammy Guerrero into laying down for him because, well, your wife's pregnant and your kids need the money and you gotta do the right thing, damn it. And sure enough, Sammy tricks him and almost gets to victory. Not bad for a first time ever world title match challenge for Sammy, I'll, I'll give him that. He's been winning the people over, I feel like, regaining the fans' trust since those dark days. Tribalists are still good tribalists, so uh, there's no stop. There's no reason with them. They can't be reasoned with. But it was so great. This match was just so great. Honestly, I could say this is a, one of the probably top ten matches of this year, in my opinion. We'll figure it out at the end. I'll probably talk about my top ten matches heading that I've seen for this year on my NRD WrestleVerse podcast. So check that out when that day comes, hopefully, unless something kind of expected happens. Let's hope not. But this is kind of up there with the top 10. Oh, the other thing I want to mention, this is, the, this is, this is once again, the continuation of my belief that this is a massive continuity callback, continuity porn. <laughs> Oh god. 
where all four of them, the four pillars, all did their mentors finisher moves. Like, MGF whipped the crossroads, and I love how commentary just casually talking about Cody Rhodes like it was yesterday. Since, you know, that other place would have gone ahead and been like, we can't really mention his name. We can't mention this guy's name. We're going to get in trouble. Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry doing the kill switch, despite everything that Christian did to him and his family, and, and him turning his best friend into, well, a monster. J Jungle Boy did learn from Chris Christian, and that says a lot. Darby Allen doing the Scorpion death drop in, as and Scorpion submission, and Sam Guevara learning from his mentor Chris Jericho, the Alatula Rock and Roller, baby. I just love to sh this. This is this is like I, I know this is gonna be a little tacked on. This is like how watching this, watching your your favorite characters from DC Comics who were sidekicks like Nightwing, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, Aqualad, like they're all doing their mentors' moves and their and their former men their predecessors' moves because they're the the legacy, the successors of those people. That, that's the vibe I kind of got, like, where they do similar stuff that their mentors used to do a lot, and even they point out, like, oh, you, you, you took that move from me, as if to showcase how much they've grown as people and as, rest, uh, and as heroes. J these four did the same thing for me last night. They showed that they've grown from their mentors. Jungle Boy from Christian, Angie F from Cody, Darby from Sting, Sammy from Chris Jericho. I bet they're in the back right now looking at each other and, be, and C Cody Rhodes is watching at home. Well, he's in Saudi currently, so <laughs> I'll be for the best. I'm pretty sure they were all watching this and they were like, that's our boys. That's our boys. Holy crap, I just now realized they missed out of a chance for a four-way for a four-way tag team match. MGF with Cody, Jack with Christian, Darby with Steve, Sammy with Jericho. Oh my god, that would have been awesome. Oh, oh god, oh god. Cody, I don't care if you're in WWE, go back to AEW just to do that. Just I don't know who you have to piss off to get there. But just do it, for God's sakes. Let, let's do that. <laughs> oh, God, that would have been perfect. But, uh, yeah. MGF, our, devil fr our devilish friend, still has his grip over the AEW world title. The devil continues to reign supreme at the holy grail of professional wrestling. And who is going to stop him? Is it... A second city saint? Is it a straight edge superstar? Is it the is it the one wing angel? The devil sky? Is it a cowboy? Or is it a mad king? So look, I've given up on the idea that A Kingston's gonna win this year for the title world title. Uh, I would have wanted that. But uh, if he wins, it still like still counts as a victory this year if he does. But I'm hoping he challenges MGF for the title eventually and wins it. Just be a modern retelling, a, a modern reinterpretation telling of of Dusty Rose versus Ted DiBiase kind of vibe. The one percent all powerful elite privileged madman taking on the common man, working hard with his hands. <laughs> So now, while that's a far away future, where do we go from here in the immediate future? Well, MJF, it, it, I don't know if he's going to wrestle at Forbidden Door. I'm like, he should. But in my opinion, he, he should broaden his horizons a little bit with the Land of the Rising Sun with Forbidden Door. Um, there are a ton of wrestlers from New Japan he could take on currently. I, in my opinion, I said this on ACW, I would kind of be interested in the idea of MJF fighting Okada. Yes, I am insane, I know. And then when we get to All In, MJF could fight Punk. 
and then at All Out, because MGF needs to remind everyone why he hates his life in AEW and character, uh, he could then take on Kenny Omega. Yeah, I think I might have just booked this a, a way to work this around, anyways. We'll see where that goes. This is just my hopeful predictions. Uh, where does Darby Allen, Jack Perry, and Sammy go? Well, Sammy's got to get ready for a kid in a few months, in nearly at the end of this year. Uh, Jack Perry, no idea where he's going to go. Probably go back to mid-card and work on his promo skills more, upper mid-card division. Darby Allen, I'm pretty sure he's going to be also part of the upper mid-card. Maybe do a couple main event matches here and there. Uh, as for storyline re as for storyline possibilities, I don't know for what goes on for the next for the next several months. We'll see, especially with AEW Collision coming around. And I'm cer certain the Punk is going to go ahead and retry to retake his throne from MJF, his his successor, so to speak. I I'm kind of amazed he hasn't done the GTS either on on, on either the of the four pillars tonight. That or you know call out see a Punk a little bit. I kind of want to want to see that since he did defeat Brian with his finisher, the LaBelle lock. I am so glad I'm there's an alternative in wrestling. I, I'm having so much fun watching AEW. I'm like, granted, I, I hope they go on max. But I'm content right now continuing to pay 50 bucks for for uh, every few months pay-per-view event sure it's gonna get a little pricey heading into july for late june to early august especially but it's gonna be a wild ride i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to collision i'm looking forward to what mgf does next i'm looking forward to what jack perry darby allen sam guevara do next i'm looking forward to the future of these four i've been i have a strong investment with them per se, per se in a wrestling fan sense and I, and I still say it. Watch what's gonna happen. What, what, you've seen them now. Imagine where they'll be like ten years from now. Like I said, if they're in AEW, they're in AEW. If they're in New Japan, they're in New Japan. If they're in WWE, they're in then they're in WWE. But like they they have to run this back eventually, just to showcase how much they've grown. Give it another couple of years. But that's about all the time I have for you tonight. Uh, I'll be going to bed soon. This was your host, Eric Brown, host of NRE The Wrestleverse, NRE Wrestleverse Podcast, NRE Neo Reality Collective, and the owner of Neo Reality Entertainment, NRE. This was your host. Uh, tired. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe to my stuff in the description below. Stay tuned for more. And if you look up here, you'll see uh, PayPal and Cash App. Um, I, I just wanted to put those up there in case anyone wanted to be courteous and you know give me donate some money just spare a few change I'm all for it. I'm not really demanding anything. I just Look, it's a side hobby. This is a hobby for me If I can make this a supplemental income, that'd be awesome But that's an optional thing. I'm not I'm not intending to make YouTube a full-on job especially nowadays Peace out see you all again next time I'm talking about Anarchy in the Arena next after this. Oh, God. See y'all again. Peace. Take care and have a good day. And take care of your loved ones, everyone. Long live the motherfucking devil of AEW.